Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. Everyone should be reading on their own, pondering his truth, and gaining a testimony for themselves by the power of the Holy Spirit. However, I would like to be a witness for the Savior that he lives, he will return, and we should all be preparing for that glorious day. And without further delay, let's go ahead and continue our studies. So we're in the, the Words of Mormon. Again, just one chapter, just like the previous ones. And as I always do, I will read and expound as we go along. Mormon abridges their history onto the plates of Mormon. He inserts the plates of Nephi into the abridgment. King Benjamin establishes peace in the land. Verse 1, And now I, Mormon, being about to deliver up the record which I have been making into the hands of my son Moroni, behold, I have witnessed almost all the destruction of my people, the Nephites. Verse 2, And it is many hundred years after the coming of Christ that I delivered these records into the hands of my son, and it supposed me that he will witness the entire destruction of my people, but may God grant that he may sur survive them, that he may write somewhat concerning them and somewhat concerning Christ, and perhaps someday it may profit them. So let's um, expound really quickly here because this is important because Mormon has a book later in the Book of Mormon, which can be a little confusing, but these, the words of Mormon is very important, and I like how it was placed at this point to give us an understanding, and more like a preview, because Mormon will go over a bit later that he's passing on the plates to Mormon, but Moroni, excuse me, his son, but this is important to, to take that he's, he's showing the transition, you can say here, so he's combining, and again, Mormon is the one that put together the whole Book of Mormon. So that's why it's called the Book of Mormon. And so this is something I, I like to take a moment to really think about how he's letting us know that he's making the abridgment. So abridgment, you can think of like a summary. So now he's compiling everything over, but also that in 3rd Nephi and 4th Nephi is where we're going to learn a bit more about those of the Nephites that were destroyed, but also those that were able to see the Savior. So this is kind of like a little preview of, of things to come. Specifically, he's saying about the destruction of the Nephites, those that do wickedness, but those that did righteousness were preserved. Verse three, and now I speak somewhat concerning that which I have written, for after I have made an abridgment from the plates of Nephi down to the reign of his of this king Benjamin, of whom Amaleki spake, I search searched among the records which had been delivered into my hands. And I found these plates which contained the small account of the prophets from Jacob down to the reign of this King Benjamin, and also many, also many of the words of Nephi. Verse 4, And the things which are upon these plates are, please, are, pleasing, me, are pleasing me, because of the prophecies of the coming of Christ, and many fathers knowing that many of them have been fulfilled. Yea, and I also know that as many things as have been prophesied concerning us down, on to, down to this day have been fulfilled, and as many as go beyond this day must surely come to pass. Verse 5, Wherefore I, cho I choose these things to finish my record upon them, which remainder of my record I shall take from the plates of Nephi, and I cannot write the hundredth part of the things of my people. Verse 6, but behold, I shall take these, next page over, plates which contain these prophecies, prophesyings, and revelations, and put them with the remainder of my record, for they are choice unto me, and I know they will be choice unto my brethren. So let's wrap up exactly what uh, Mormon is explaining here, and I did touch a little bit about it. So basically what he's saying is he's putting together all the records together. However, he's making an abridgment. So obviously, and what he means by that hundredth part, obviously it is not room to put everything, which is why an abridgment is necessary, but also to keep in mind that God is directing them. He has the Holy Spirit to be with them. So those things that he is putting together, and again, he's the one that's doing that by the direction of God, it would be enough for us. And God is the one to ultimately determine which things should come forth. But Mormon is doing a wonderful job in which he did to bring forth the Book of Mormon, put it together, and then later the prophet Joseph Smith was able to translate. 
Verse 7, and I do this for a wise purpose, for thus it whispereth me according to the workings of the spirit of the Lord, which is in me. And now I do not know all things, but the Lord knoweth all things which are to come. Wherefore, he worketh in me to do according to his will. Verse eight. And my prayer to God is concerning my brethren, that they may once again come to the knowledge of God, yea, the redemption of Christ, that they may once again be a delightsome people. Verse nine. And now I, Mormon, proceed to finish out my record, which I take from the plates of Nephi, and I make it according to the knowledge and the understanding which God has given me. Verse 10. Wherefore it came to pass that after Amaleki had delivered up these plates into the hands of King Benjamin, he took them and put them with the other plates, which contained records which had been handed down by the kings from generation to generation until the days of King Benjamin. Verse 11. And they were handed down from King Benjamin from generation to generation until they had fallen into my hands. And I, Mormon, pray to God that they may be preserved from this time henceforth. And I know that they will be preserved for they are great things written upon them out of which my people and their brethren shall be judged at the great and last day according to the word of God, which is written. So specifically the verse, this previous verse or verse 11 I definitely want to expound on because this is important. We all know that we're going to be judged by the Savior, and we all want to know well, what we're going to be judged upon. So what's the standard? So how, how do we know to, to gauge how we're doing? This is why it's important to have these words, to have the Bible, the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, the Pearl of Great Price. Those are the standards. Those are the guidelines to help us understand how we're doing. So if we read the scriptures and we hearken, hearken to them and apply them to our lives, if we do what the, the scriptures are teaching, which teach us to do good, then we should have zero concern about going through the judgment process with the Savior. However, if we're not doing the things that the scriptures teach us or not doing what the Savior taught us, then we have reason for concern, and that concern should lead us to repentance. Verse 12. And now concerning this King Benjamin, he had somewhat of contentions among his own people. Verse 13, and it came to pass also that the armies of the Lamanites came down out of the land of Nephi to battle against his people. But behold, King Benjamin gathered together his armies and he did stand against them. And he did fight with the strength of his own arm with the sword of Laban. And I really like this verse here, how the sword of Laban is still around. This is incredible. Again, this is hundreds of years after uh, Nephi obtained that sword from Laban and actually used that same sword to slay Laban. But obviously, when I think about it, they probably took took really good care of it and passed it down, probably went through a refinery process and to preserve it. But that's like a really magical sword to kind of think about it in a way. Verse 14, and in the strength of the Lord, they did contend against their enemies until they had slain many thousands of Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did contend against the Lamanites until they had driven them out of the lands of their inheritance. Verse 15, and it came to pass that after there had been false Christ and their mouth has been shut and they punish and they punish according to their crimes. Verse 16, and after they had been false prophets and false preachers and teachers among the people and all these having been punished according to their crimes, and after they haven't been much contention and many dissensions away onto the Lamanites, behold, it came to pass that King Benjamin, with the assistance of the holy prophets who were among his people. Verse 17, for behold, King Benjamin was a holy man and he did reign over his people in righteousness. And there were many holy men in the land and they did speak the word of God with power and with authority. And they did use much sharpness because of the stiff neckedness of the people. Verse 18, wherefore with the help of these, these King Benjamin, by laboring with, his, with all the might of his, his body and the faculty of his whole soul, and also the prophets did once more establish peace in the land. So this is, um, these previous verses are illustrating why King Benjamin became a great source of goodness for the people and ultimately became a great person to look at as someone that brought peace to the Nephites. But in particular, I want to expound on a couple of things 
going back to verse 15, this is something that's actually still happening today. Not so much false Christ. I haven't run into that too much where people are claiming they are the Savior. Um, I haven't really run into that, but obviously that's possible. But a couple other things, false prophets, that's happening. People call themselves prophets or taking upon titles of like apostles, um, saying they're disciples, well, official disciples, you can say, uh, which are not a part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So if you're not and you haven't been given that proper authority, that's false, false apostleship, you can say. But another thing about contentions they have with the people, some people actually join in the Lamanites as well. So you can kind of, I can only imagine the things that um, King Benjamin had to go through. And this is like something that happens with us in our own families as well. Like we've got the world that may be against us, but also we got problems with our own, within our own family. So it's like you're fighting two battles at once. And both of them come in simultaneously where you don't feel like you have the opportunity to focus on just one. But if you do, obviously you want to focus on your family first, make peace at home first, then help bring peace with the world. But that is just something that's fascinating. But King Benjamin wasn't alone. Fortunately, obviously there's God, the father, there's a savior, there's a Holy Spirit. But then he had prophets to help him. The last thing I wanted, or the final thing I wanted to go over, is about stiff neckedness. Relate that to pride, stubbornness, those that are not willing to listen. But they also, they also mentioned about they had to use a level of sharpness, which again, we need to be bold. Now, I know as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Light of Day Saints, we're taught to turn the other cheek. We're taught to be peacemakers, which is all true. However, there are times, and there's been many times in my life, while well, I had to basically put my foot down and be very firm with people. And we should not be afraid to do that. And I've learned to do that from love in my heart. Obviously, I'm going to be very strong in the words I use, but I'm not going to curse. You know, we shouldn't call people names and all that stuff. But we should give them tough love, as they say. So some people need that tough love because when you come at them really gentle, they're just going to push you off or come off that, uh, come off to say, well, you're just, easy going and you know they're not going to listen to you but i know that and i testify my brothers and sisters that the holy spirit will be there to guide us when we need to use as they mentioned here again this um toughness with them you can say the stiffness sharpness of speech again not every time we need to do that but there are times when we do and i have grown in those situations i've learned how to be more bold obviously you want to be gentle with people first but then when you know gentleness is not going to work and you need to be a bit tougher on them, the Holy Spirit will be there to guide us to portray our message in a loving manner if we seek the Spirit to be with us. And that concludes the chapter. And I wanted to leave you all with my testimony that I know God loves us. I know that with all my soul, I have felt his love numerous times in my life. And I know that he is willing to give us prophets that help us, just like they did King Benjamin, to help teach us and the people to turn away from wickedness. I know that the Savior lives and that he is the one that we can always look to for that perfect example. I know that he will return and that the Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit will give us answers to prayers. We will feel that it is true and we will know that God is real. I know that the Book of Mormon is true. It is the Holy Word of God. And I know it is true by the Holy Spirit. I also know that the Bible is real. It is also the Holy Word of God. They go together, but neither one replace each other. We need both the Bible and the Book of Mormon to have a fullness of the gospel. I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a restored church. It is holy. It has the authority to do baptism, the proper authority to lead us to eternal life. And I know that God will always be there to help us if we seek out him. I know all these things are true, and I leave y'all with my testimony in the name of the Prince of Peace himself, Jesus Christ. Amen.